So everybody has a failed print once in a while, so I am talking about my failures with the Anycubic Photon S and what I've learned from them. Hey guys, what's going on? Michael here. So I am talking today about some of my failures with my Anycubic Photon S. So I've got a, uh, a handful of different things, including one very recent print that are all failures. And I wanna share a little bit about why these failed and what I'm doing differently with my prints. Uh, so this one in particular I, um, I did recently and that one uh, appears to have been because I paused it. Uh, and then I've got some older prints that um, had had different issues with the prints. So I think it's important to learn from these failures and uh, and to share so that other people don't make the same mistakes that I've did. Um, essentially, uh, every time I do it, I, uh, I get better with it, but uh, I don't wanna keep having issues. So with this one in particular, this is my magnetic tiles. And as you can see, since my last video, I attempted to alter this uh, so that these would be solid. Um, you can see the failure line on these. Um, that failure line uh, was exactly where I paused this print with the Anycubic Photon S to add more resin. Uh, and it appears that what happened was that once I paused it, it never correctly bonded back to the previous layer. So um, I got that kind of pizza shaped cut in the, uh, the print, which is um, to me, it makes this unusable. Um, and unfortunately with these, it was a good bit of resin that was used uh, to cast this print. So um, I, uh, I didn't really realize until afterwards that this failure line would, uh, would kill the entire print. Uh, so with this one, my takeaway was uh, essentially add the resin um, while the printer is going and don't hit the pause button. Um, it's kind of a, a risky situation because if you bump uh, your printer, uh, while you're doing this, you can cause other issues with the print, but I think that's the better way to go in the future. Now I have since printed this print again, and I know that it was not my supports, um, which is another issue that you have to watch um, when you're doing these sorts of prints um, to make sure that everything is correctly uh, supported, because uh, these hang upside down like a bat while you're doing your print. And uh, if the supports are not correct, um, that can give you uh, other uh, issues um, with your print. Um, with this one, um, I chalk this up to just my own ex inexperience with the pausing of the, uh, the print function. Um, but nevertheless, it's a good thing to pass on. Uh, now this print uh, is a little different. This was actually my very first print, um, which I did um, on the Anycubic Photon S and it uses the green resin, which was the sample bottle. This is actually a dust port for out in my wood shop. Um, and with this one, basically I had failure um, on this one surface of the print. You can see how the layer lines did not properly bond and adhere. And that was 100% due to the fact that I didn't know what I was doing with the supports. I used the software program that came with the Anycubic Photon S uh, to automatically add the supports and it basically put no supports in this print. Um, and the area, the flat area where it delaminated and peeled um, was left totally free floating and that's what caused the issue. I'm surprised honestly in retrospect that the print was as successful as it actually is because I would have expected it to fail 100% but that's just a good example of the quality of the printer um, making up for the issues with the STL uh, file and the, uh, the support layout. Uh, so this print um, for me 
uh, again is totally unusable um, but it's a good example of, uh, of what can go wrong. Uh, now with my last couple of examples these are actually dwarven wall pieces uh, that I wanted to print um, and I have different failures so um, I have since reprinted them uh, in black resin and the prints are now perfect because of my experience but like for example the one on screen at the moment that print uh, had an issue at the bottom where it had one corner that was not supported so the uh, the print failed um, the other print that I'm showing right now if you notice there are supports that are placed so close to the face of this piece that they are impossible to remove without scarring the piece now normally you could cut them away, prime them, and you could maybe hide that. But for me, my intention is to take these and treat them as masters and essentially make a mold of them that uh, I, will, uh, I will do castings in plaster. So I need them to be perfect. The little bend up in the corner because it is not supported. Um, and then the issues with those um, supports being so close to the face of this print that you can't remove them without scarring the print are enough to make these uh, useless to me for my purposes. Um, so it's all learning experiences. Uh, what I found actually in later prints was that the dwarven walls didn't need those face supports at all. They were perfectly fine to print without those supports and that caused me to get a much cleaner print and then to address the issue with the corners curling I added uh, supports uh, in the corners that would kind of attach uh, to them and keep them from uh, from curling at that point um, I've essentially seen a couple of other issues um, with failed prints uh, from this printer um, one, I would tell you that the build plate, the actual plate that hangs upside down has to be perfectly, perfectly level. If you are off just a little bit in any one direction, um, that will cause you a failed print. Um, you really need to spend a lot of time and get that perfect. Um, as you see in a previous video, I talked about um, a aftermarket product that I got that was supposed to fix some issues with that which wound up creating more issues than it uh, fixed. Um, one of the other issues uh, is the, uh, the film. Um, it's the Teflon coated uh, film that goes at the bottom of your resin vat. That film, if it has any punctures to it and resin leaks out underneath, the resin will cure um, between the film and the glass of your um, monitor and that will cause you a failed print because then every print that you do will be under cured um, and then you also want to be very careful that that film doesn't have any chunks of resin that uh, is left in it. I have started cleaning out the resin vat with some uh, alcohol after each print and I have found that I get better prints because of taking the time to do it but you do waste a little resin in that cleaning process. Um, with all of these failed prints um, I, uh, I go back and I try to figure out why and I think that's very important. Um, with a printer like the Anycubic Photon S you're dealing with something that is not the most expensive printer on the market um, and that being said um, you don't always get a machine that is without some issues I think I mean this is my first 3d printer and I think that I am doing fairly well uh, about an 80 percent success rate and I am you know constantly getting better and better results with the quality of the print. Um, but as always, uh, if you guys have any questions whatsoever, leave them for me in the comments. And uh, if you have suggestions, um, if you are an owner of the Anycubic Photon S um, or the Anycubic Photon 
and you have suggestions on how my prints, uh, how I can get better and better results, um, I would love to hear them. Thank you guys for watching the video and uh, I will catch you next time. Hey, if you like these videos and want to help me keep making them, make sure you hit the like and subscribe button.